What's up, y'all? Hey, I'm Jimmy Cameron. I'm D. Pants. Hey, hey y'all, I'm Shane Jimmy Cameron. Cameron. Hi, I'm Jeremy Burgess. Hello, I'm Larry Crow. Hi, I'm Larry's mom. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Cody. And I'm Bearcat. We're Big Hill Media. Hi, I'm Paul Wolf. This is Laney. And I'm Christy. Welcome to the Hill. Welcome to the Hill. You're going to see this is on the Hill with Nick. Welcome to the Hill. 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 What's up, y'all? Thank you guys so much for joining us, man. We got 40 people in here. I love it. William Wallace, Jerry Foley, Miss Kathy Crow. Merry Christmas, Kathy. I'm gonna uh, be talking about that Christmas spirit here in just a second. Hey, y'all, kick back. This is gonna be uh, very informative. Big news here, y'all. Stand by. is up y'all welcome to the hill man uh mama got the tree up today it smells like christmas in here it's got me fired up y'all um it, it uh miss kathy chimed in and said merry christmas everybody uh and uh that is no lie it, i am feeling the christmas spirit uh i love it and what makes it even better is i get to spend it with y'all so this is great. This is great. Man, we got uh, quite a few people in here. I, I, I appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight. We definitely have uh, some big news. And I, you know me. I, I love uh, coming with the, the big news, the big announcements. And it doesn't get much bigger than this. Um, but first of all, I, I want to give a quick shout out to all of our sponsors, the folks that make it possible for us to be here right now. I'm wearing one of them, uh, Black Dog Photography. Uh, huge shout out to Jonathan Wright uh, and also Dylan at Deep Pats Photography. They provide all of our stills. And if y'all don't realize how big stills are, still are, as far as marketing, as far as 
uh, uh, if you are trying to build anything these days, you have to have stills. And, and it doesn't get much better than Jonathan Wright with Black Dog Photography and, and Dylan Patton at d Photography, man. I, I know I'm a little biased, but at the same time, they're just amazing photos, y'all, and, and absolutely necessary. Uh, next, I want to give a shout out to Charles Caris at High Octane Films, always providing us footage to watch. Uh, he, uh, Charles has helped me get a start in this sport, so thank you very much, Charles, for all you do for us. And continuing on with media, wrapping it up is Lucas at uh, Eagle Eye Productions, just straight changing how we watch Rock Bouncing, y'all. Uh, next year is going to be epic with the drone footage, and I, for one, am, am ecstatic, ecstatic to, uh, to see what is to come. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Cash LaCroix Racing. Uh, Cash, John, their entire family have done uh, so much for me, for my show, so I want to give a huge shout out to those guys as well. And that wraps up our sponsors. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to go right into uh, getting into it here because, uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm terrible at, at keeping secrets and I'm terrible at, uh, you know, not discussing the elephant in the room. Um, we, we heard some news a few days ago that uh, there was a, uh, a new series uh, popping up here. We, we love to see the sport grow, especially with... Uh, you know, it, when it's growing uh, out, up and out, you know, that's, that's what we want. We, we you know, we're not trying to, uh, to uh, flood the market. We're not trying to have 13 race series all doing the same thing because that's not what's happening. You know, uh, these, these different race series that are popping up are doing their own thing. And uh, this, this one that we're going to learn about tonight is, is no different. So without further ado, let's get them on here. Uh, down below there, you got Mr. Kevin Taylor, and up top, wearing the captain's hat, uh, Mr. Shelby St. Clair. What's up, y'all? Gentlemen, thank you for joining. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good, How are good, you? Good, good. Uh, let me know, everybody at home and so on, if y'all can uh, hear these guys all right and see them okay. Um, I know Kevin's a little low on the screen. I'll try to get that resolved there. That should be better. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, we want to make sure everybody can hear him. And I just uh, have to sit up. <laughs> and, and no, you're good. You're good. I had the uh, I had it zoomed in a little too far. So what's up, gentlemen? Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Yes, I did. I, I know Kevin did. I know I did. And uh, we're just looking ready for uh, getting ready for 2021. Yep. Yes, sir. I, I, I hear you yeah. there. Um, I can't believe we're a month away, and it feels like it's just coming too fast. <laughs> yes. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving. All my family came over, my parents, um, family. We had lots of people. Awesome. Um, I just want to establish real quick, uh, we are probably going to, I mean, we got almost 100 people in here, so there are probably going to be comments and stuff coming in too fast for me to to go back to for me to keep up with so um if if you've got something important to say or or your question doesn't get answered for everybody watching um s send it out again uh we'll, we'll try to definitely try to get it answered uh we want everybody to leave here with a good understanding of what point one is uh and and um hopefully uh you know leave, leave no st stone unturned if you will you know does that make sense Yes, most definitely. And, and really, if, if your uh, question does get skipped over, feel free to shoot me a PM. I mean, I've been getting messages like crazy for the last two weeks. And <laughs> you can ask Kevin. It's like we're on our phones from 5 o'clock in the morning till midnight most days. Yeah. It's, it has been quite a hectic couple of weeks since the 18th of November. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. so with that said, Kevin, uh, let's rewind to 18 November – Maybe not 18 November, but, 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 you know, right around that time. And, and what is going on in – what's going on where this is brewing? We're all hearing things. Tell, tell us uh, – get us started there. Uh, well, you've got um, – you have a successful race series that is doing well, and then you have a few difference of opinions – 
and what happens is is some people see things one way and others see things another way and I was kind of put into a situation where I had to choose between a name or my race family and so I decided to choose my race family and um, we kind of went our own direction and at first um, we were sitting there going what are we going to do what are we going to do and then I'm not sure who spoke up but they said well let's do this all over again and that's where it started Shelby's raising his hand like yeah I'm guilty of that <laughs> <laughs> my bad yeah, yeah yeah so Shelby uh, you you raise your hand and you uh, are part of that race family that he's talking about and uh you know you step up big time you have been a busy guy you want to tell us about it uh yeah sure i mean you know i raced without uh with the other series back in 2019 i ran the full season very unsuccessful season for myself rig was always break it was a brand new rig i mean literally the first race we had a blown motor three days before and the day before um but you know i still you know kept my head down and and you know i, I churned and turned and you know, was able to you know finish the season i think i finished 14th or 15th overall which wasn't bad for my rookie season uh started off 2020 this same exact way uh literally broke on the trailer on the way to alabama and I was kind of bummed out that weekend. And then the next race, I told Kevin, I said, hey, I've sold my rig. I'm going to just show up and help you all out. What do you want me to do? He handed me the microphone and said, get to work. So really ever since uh, March of 2020, I've been heavily involved in Outlaw, or the other series, excuse me, um, and now with Point One, And it's been a whirlwind, to say the least. I mean, I have enjoyed every bit of it, and I would not change it for the world. Yep. Man, uh, and speaking as far as volunteering and, and stuff like that goes, uh, what a lifestyle. It has literally become a lifestyle for me to be that guy who volunteers. As you all know, I, I do. Uh, I started out doing the RC stuff at uh, with the National Rock Racing Association. Got my foot in the door there. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, it, it is literally a, a lifestyle. I stay packed. And uh, and Shelby, you got to be doing the same thing. If you're going from racing to I'm still going to be involved, I don't want to be sitting in the stands. You know, that's a big commitment. That is a huge commitment. It really was. And, and really for me, sitting in the stands was never an option for me. Um, even when I go to the races of other series, you, you've seen it. I mean, I'm down there, you know, with the drivers hanging out, helping out, making sure they're strapped in. I'm going to do whatever I can to help better the sport just like you are. And luckily, I found the right family with, you know, Kevin Taylor and, and Heath Day and Kerry Day and, and Jan Collins and Jerry Foley that, you know, I feel like I'm at home with this series. Yep. That's awesome. Now, Kevin, going talking about uh, commitment. <laughs> To, to start a race series is a huge commitment. To start a second race series is even – has got to be astronomically uh, – yeah, that's, that's a lot of commitment. The only good thing that we have going right now is the experience. Um, I've done this once, so I can do it again. But um, you guys don't realize the amount of hours – that we put in just to bring one single race to you guys. And if it wasn't for my race family, which is Heath and, and Carrie and uh, Shelby and Amy and Jerry and Jan and now uh, Ian and um, Catherine, this would, none of this would happen. So without one of those guys, we couldn't make it happen. And without those, then if they're not going to help me, then I'm just, I'm not going to do a series um, because I'm the guy behind the scenes. I'm the one that does all the paperwork. I'm the one that does all the finances. And they're the ones that are actually out there busting their rear ends. And, well, I mean, I show up early also, but, you know, we start on Wednesday. We start uh, working at the race hill on a Wednesday, and hopefully by Friday we're finished. And then we've got to get got all the racers coming in, and it's just there is a lot of work to be had. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Uh, um, 
Shelby's wearing the captain's hat, but you should be wearing the, the general stars as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, this this hat has a lot of special meaning to me, thanks to Mr. Johnny Gibbs. Uh, he gave me this hat, I believe, at Hooter Holler this season. And I wore it there, and I think I've worn it every race since. And my wife told me tonight, she's like, you ought to wear your, your captain's hat. And it was still sitting on the dash of my truck from the last time I wore it. So I ran out the dually, grabbed it, and threw it on before tonight. So this is just for you, Johnny. I love you, buddy. Charles, Charles says, uh, Charles Caress, he says, look, hey, look, it's the skipper. Where's Gilligan? <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Gibbs is the Gilligan. Or, or it could be Kevin. Yeah, one of the two. <laughs> hey, real quick, where does point one uh, come from? Where's the name come from? Kevin, do you want to answer that one, or do you want me to take it? Well, um, thank you, sweetie. Excuse That's me That's a martini a delivery. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Pickletini. 7.15 no, uh, on the dot. Well, you know, you've got a lot of race, ser <laughs> a lot of race series out there, and um, it just seems like they're all pirate names. And I wanted to bring something a little bit more in tune to actually what goes on at a race. And I spend a lot of time around the time and tent. And, of course, we have racers that are coming up to the tent. What are my times? What are my times? What are my times? And 90% of them, oh, man, I'm only .1 second behind him. You know, they don't ever say I'm .001 or .005. They always look at it as a .1 or .2 seconds behind them. So I said, well, why can't we name our race series that? And that's where point one came from is, you know, that's the difference between first and last, point one. Yep. yep. That is, that's, that's very cool, man. Very unique. Very unique. Uh, and, it, and I like that it comes with a from experience that you've had. It's not just something that you kind of came up with. I mean, it came from having the drivers come around the tent and having that experience experience that uh, so that makes the meaning even deeper as far as i'm concerned i like it i like and, it yep and and let me elaborate a little bit on the Please. times that kevin just yep. said you know and, and the drivers coming up to the timing tent uh one thing that sets us apart or really makes us different from any other series is we're all about full transparency so we have a wi-fi set, uh, system set up at the hill where if you're at the race you can log into our wi-fi router and pull up our little website address and you can actually see live race times as they're entered. Cool. And to go a step beyond that for 2021, we're in talks of having, I believe a 65 inch TV in the driver staging area with not only who's up next, who's behind them, et cetera, with the driving order or the race order, but also what their times are currently. Kind of, kind of lets them know, hey, I need to drive harder this next deal, or sure. I've got 12 seconds ahead of Timmy. You know, I can kind of take, you know, hit the brakes a little bit. But we're, we're doing everything we can to be as transparent as possible and keep the racers, not that we don't want them at the timing tent, but we're just trying to keep them away from where the race ops are because there's a lot of moving parts and pieces in that timing tent. Awesome. That is very cool, guys. That is very cool. I like it. Um, most, most definitely. Um, who, who makes up? You, you had mentioned uh, you went down, Kevin, real quick and listed off some names. Let's deep dive into that a little bit more. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to go too deep, but just the name of the person, what they're doing, uh, and maybe, you know, what, what uh, yeah, like roles and stuff. You know what I mean? Okay, probably the most important person that we have is Heath Day. Um, if it wasn't for Heath, there is no way any of this would happen. Um, we call him the wizard. Uh, he is the billy goat up and down the mountain. He gets there on Wednesday, starts clearing trails, and marks the trails, strings tape up, and then he helps with recovery and pretty much runs the top of the hill during the race. His wife, Carrie... Um, she is in charge of our apparel. Uh, we consider her the ghost. Uh, she never, um, you never talk about her. You never see her. She's always in the background, but we love her just as much as we do Heath. Then you've got, uh, Shelby. Shelby's our announcer. Um, he keeps the show going and he does a very good job of it, but where he has really stepped up, he's taken a load off of me with Facebook as well as the sponsors. This year, he has done a tremendous job at that. His wife, uh, Amy, 
she is going to be in charge of the time intent. She is responsible for making sure that all the times are correct and they're inputted into the system correctly. Um, and she is going to be the manager of the race hill. So she'll be in complete, complete control. Um, if she doesn't give the go-ahead, then the racers don't start. Uh, Ian Boyce and Catherine Boyce, they're new to the crew this year. They are going to be helping with the time intent, and Ian is going to be helping with recovery, as well as he's going to be in charge of the starting line. Then another huge help is Jerry Foley. Uh, Jerry Foley, we call him the cat herder. He herds all the cats, gets them in line to get them up to the, the starting line, and that is probably one of the hardest jobs during the race itself. And last but not least, uh, my best friend, Jan Collins. Jan has been uh, in charge of recovery uh, for various operations for four years, and he's come decided to come back with us this year and continue recovering. And if it wasn't for him and his big rig, we wouldn't get half the vehicles off the hill. But that's our crew. That's awesome. I'm a nobody. I'm the, I'm the chicken that runs around like my head's cut off because um, my, my main goal is to make sure that our race runs as smooth as possible. And I have drivers that come up to me and say, hey, you remember we talked about this? And I look at them and I go, uh, yeah, yeah. And I have no idea. So speaking of the, the racing, what kind of racing are we going to see from point one? You want me to take that one, Kevin? Um, I'll take it because I'm going to have okay. us. Uh, um, we're going to have side-by-side -side racing uh, with side-by-sides. Well, two at a time racing, excuse me. We get confused there ourselves sometimes. Uh, we're going to race two at a time, and we're going to race side-by-sides and unlimited buggies. Um, the, in the years past, the unlimited buggies have always come back for a third hill. Well, this year, we are going to bring back the top five side-by-sides for a third hill as well. Um, we are looking into possibly running one hill with side-by-sides or one round with side-by-sides, one round with UTV, second round with side-by-sides, and second round with unlimited, and then go into our top tens for both of those. Uh, we've increased the payouts for side-by-side, and we're now paying out uh, top five for side-by-side as well. Awesome. As well as top ten on the unlimited class. As well as top ten on unlimited. Do you, do you want Shelby, you want to go over the classes real quick? Or, or Kevin, sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I can take it over. Uh, unlimited classes, of course, your big bouncer, you know, your Timmy Camerons, your, your Bubba Bacons, your Jake Pikes, your Larry Krogs, et cetera. And then, of course, the side-by-side -side is pretty self-explanatory. Um, we kind of got away from the UTV name and decided to go back to a more traditional side-by-side -side name because not everything's considered a utility vehicle, right? Um, so that's kind of what we did done, the Unlimited Series and Side-by-Side -side Series. Um, and like Kevin said, we're going to bring back the top 10 of unlimited and the top five of the side by side classes and to kind of clean up what Kevin said on the, how we're thinking about running it is we're thinking about running round one of the unlimited class and then round one of the side by side class and then round two unlimited round two side by side, et cetera, all the way to the third round, which will be your top 10 and your top five. And a reason for that is if you're driving a side-by-side -side and you break, or even an unlimited car and you break, it'll give you that much more time to get your rig fixed before we have to DNS or DNS you for that hill. So I just, this just came into my thoughts, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong about this, but normal rock bouncing hills, normal rock bouncing races have two hills, right? Um, with yes. you guys having two courses for three different rounds that's six hills is it is it am i right no it, it'll still be three hills it's just that we run right. two okay. unlimited that's cars right. at the same time or two side by sides at the same right. time and then, and then what we do on the top 10 
you know, yeah, then, then they'll switch for their round two. Yeah. And then for top ten and top five, what we typically do is make a combination of lane one and lane two. Yeah. Like um, at Mid-America, they ended up running both lanes, which was, I think, close to a mile, if not over a mile long, uh, when it was all said and done. And and really, we're doing it for the drivers to have that much more seat time, because how many times do you see drivers show up to a race and they only run for 40 to 60 seconds? Mm-hmm. Let's give them that extra, you know, 40 to 50 seconds extra run time, extra seat time in the rig. Sure. Just one thing that they need to learn is bring plenty of fuel with you. And yes, I'm talking to you, Adam Coots. <laughs> so you know, just make sure they bring you know plenty of fuel so they don't run out of fuel in between rounds. He just said yes, yes, yes. I love that. Uh, he said that when you were talking about payouts, you know, the payouts going down. So uh, he he just yep. chimed in. <laughs> uh, um. Adam has been instrumental in helping us push um, the Sabasad series. Yep. Yeah, yeah yes. no doubt about it, man. Uh, he he jumped in head first. That whole Perryville Mafia group just, you know, they are super committed. Very, very, very committed. They, I mean, really, nobody knew where Perryville was until everybody came down. I mean, Shane, you know, he's been up there for years racing. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you got Jay Storch, you got Ryan Robbins, Adam Coots, Daniel Heckley. I mean, the whole clan down there. And we can't forget about Owen Garris. I mean, the kids out there in a full body RS1 hitting the same hills as these big boys yep. are. So, you know, y'all give it up for Owen Garris for for stepping out and doing something different with a full body. Well, we're gonna see, uh, and then Jake, you know, Jake Christian Jr. Yeah, we're gonna see Owen back uh, in something a little different next year. I'm excited about that. That's yep. what I've been hearing from his daddy. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Can't wait, man. No doubt. Uh, let's see. Will Bell asks, why not top ten side by sides? That's a good question, Kevin. Uh, well, you know, last the past few years, side by sides, we've been slowly working our way up, and this is our next logical step as to getting up to the top ten side by sides. We started off with, you know, maybe ten side by sides racing, and then we went up to fifteen, and then we went up to twenty, and so now we can make a decision to go ahead and let's let's up the payouts for top five. So. You know, side by side will get top five payouts, and then we're going to bring that top five for the third hill. Maybe next year, it's up to you guys to come race with us. We can go top ten. Yep. I, I like hey, if I'll go ahead and go on record right now, and Kevin, you can slap me later. Uh, I mean, if we can get forty UTVs side by sides at every race, we'll do a top ten. We'll increase the payouts. I mean, we can run forty side by sides and forty you know rock bouncers up three hills each in probably six hours. Heath, don't kill me. I love you, buddy. You're fired. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Shelton, I, but I am the boss. I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get caught up on some comments here real quick. Uh, Jonathan Shilton says, okay. "I don't know about I don't know, but I like this. Can't wait. I'm gonna try my hardest to be at every event." Um, Adam Coot says, "It's already a long enough day." Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Melissa Cuppy joining us. William Wallace. Zach Pickett, Ken Wiles, Travis, what's up, y'all? Uh, Jeremy and Rebecca Garris joining us. Uh, uh, he he was replying to Will Bell's comment about the top ten. He said, you'll just have to try harder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anthony Yant joining us. Uh, Anthony says, I have ran about every race series out there. This group of people, hands down, are the most fair and organized out there. Racers very much appreciate y'all's hard work and dedication. Thank you, Thank Anthony. You. We appreciate that. Uh, Steve Tibbs, Bounty Hills are a must at the end of every event. Is that something you guys are going to continue? Steve, um, there are certain places and times for a Bounty Hill, and a lot of times when by the end of the day, the outlaw, excuse me, excuse me, the point one crew is done. We can't go on any further because we've been up since five o'clock that morning and running a race all day long. But when the time warrants, uh, we will consider it. Awesome. Uh, we, we've done it the last two seasons at finals. We, we have had a uh, bounty hill. No, I'm sorry, not the last two. We did it two of the last three at finals. We did it at uh, Mid-America, and then we also did it at Hulk Pride back in 2018. Yep. Man, Jason made that Bounty Hill at Mid-America its its own race. It was like its own event. Yes. Those guys are amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that in just a second. 
We're going to get into that in just a second. Uh, <laughs> Adam says, love these guys. There's no stress at their races, and it's so much fun. Owen Garris, speaking of Owen Garris, he's joining us. Uh, William Wallace, tell them about Iowa, old son. Uh, we'll, we can get into that. Is that a race in Iowa? No. Uh, Not the window of. <laughs> uh, Heath Day said, I just quit. But Talking about the 40, 40 race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, I do too. Jerry Foley just Shelby's said, fired. I quit. He quits. Jer- Jerry says we'll just Wait, start didn't... earlier to get eighty rigs up the hill. <laughs> Drivers meeting at zero four thirty. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, let's see. Your race Make hill sure manager may not race. be awake by then, but we'll do it. <laughs> Taylor Pickett says payouts sound good. Uh. Uh, let's see. Amy says, also love watching Jaden Stortz and Kelsey from Paraville. Yep. There's so many drivers up there. I mean, yep. I always I always miss some. I always, uh, yeah, William Wallace says 05, 05 a.m. <laughs> uh, Jed Harper says, you guys are definitely awesome to race with. Bebo Watt, uh, Bouncer Life says he can't wait. Kenneth Cozy joining us. Jerry says, uh, Jerry Foley, if it keeps – Growing, we might have to. We'll do whatever it takes, though. That's I love that, man. That, that's the attitude. Uh, I love that attitude. Uh, Miss, and we will do whatever it takes. Yep. Yeah. Miss Carrie Day, hop, uh, and clearing hills and laying out race courses for days before race day. There's a lot of work, man. No doubt about it. Um, Who is she? Yeah. The ghost. the ghost. Oh, the ghost. The ghost. Char- okay. yeah, that's Charles right. Chris says, Hawk Pride was just the top 10 hill, not a bounty. Yeah, you're right. He's right. That um, At Hawk Pride, the, the ba- well, technically it was Ed's bounty hill, Ed Bendel's uh, bounty hill, but that was that did end up being the top 10 hill to finish out finals in 2018. So thank you, Charles, for clarifying that for us because you got a better memory than I do. <laughs> uh, yep. Let's see. Jake Terry, love uh, love what these guys do and gals do. Way good. Uh, who's who's that ugly guy on top? <laughs> it's me, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> um, Long story behind that. So Taylor Pickett asked a good question. Uh, how are driver spots picked? Qualify, pull the number. How how's that going to work? That's a good question. Okay, so um, I have a magical formula that determines your spot where you start based on when you pay. No, just kidding. Um, what we do is we always have a driver's meeting uh, before uh, the race on race day. I've got a formula built into an Excel sheet that automatically shuffles, and I normally will uh, pick one person to say – Pick, give me a number between one and five, and then we'll shuffle that many times, and that's the running order for the day. Interesting. Uh, Charles. Cruz. And to kind of uh, elaborate on what Kevin just said as far as the running order, uh, this year I know Kevin and I talked about it, but we're going to have different color stickers for the side-by-side class versus the unlimited class because too many times a side-by-side guy will grab an unlimited number then the unlimited guy doesn't know where his number's at. So we're just trying to streamline the process, make it a lot easier for the drivers and for Jerry and for Ian for making sure the right person's on the line at the right time. Uh, Man, I'm I'm not even going to keep going here. The comments are coming in so fast. I, I, uh, I can't keep up. I can, I can barely read them. They're coming across so fast. I mean, This is great, y'all. Thank you, guys. So much I've had I've watching. seen a couple about the I've seen a couple about the race schedule and the park yep, location. Okay, so so that was now a good time to dig yep, into that. That's what I was going to get into next. Go ahead. Okay, uh, Kevin, you want me to take this one? Take it. All right. So we're going to start off our season opener March twentieth uh, at a new park in Harrisburg, Illinois, called Williams Hill Pass. Uh, I looked it up yesterday. It's ninety nine miles from Perryville, Missouri. And 799 miles for me. Oop, what happened? No, there we go. Um, so that's going to be our first race, March 20th. Um, we did not stack on anybody else's dates for that. 
Uh, our second race, we are, a lot of people are going to be happy about this, we are headed to Kentucky. June the 5th, I believe. Kevin, is that correct? Uh, let me believe, get over there. I don't have it in front of me right now. I'm just going off of memory. But I believe it's June 5th. We're going to Dirt Nasty in Moorhead, Kentucky. June the 5th, Dirt Nasty, Moorhead, Kentucky. Okay, and that's about 937 miles for me, so y'all are welcome. It's about 700 and something for Kevin. Uh, July 3rd, we are going to Missouri. We're going back to Hooter Holler Off-Road Park in Mountain Grove, Missouri. Uh, yes, we know it's a holiday weekend. There was only two open dates, which was July 3rd and July 10th. And we decided to pick the July 3rd event or the July 3rd date for Hooter Holler because of the Visions event that is two weeks later at Mid America. That starts on the 16th to the 25th. I want to get into that too. Go ahead. I want to talk about Visions, but let's we'll go over the schedule. Yeah. Yes. So, so you know, a lot of drivers might be upset with us for the July 3rd thing. We did it kind of central where it isn't too far away. That way they can get home after the race on Saturday, go spend, you know, Sunday on the lake or whatever. Uh, most people might be off on Monday. I know I am. So um, we picked that date for a reason to give people time to still enjoy the 4th of July. Um, now, I, course, I would, like, would like to say something. Um one of our biggest things in our series is not to step on any other series toes and we don't want to stack dates and we don't want to stack parks and we're not going to do that if we can avoid it and that's what happened this year is the reason why we've got two dates that are on holidays yes uh, and then of course our, our finals event is to be determined as far as a location uh, we have not been able to secure that yet, uh, but as of right now, I think this is pretty set in stone, which is going to be Labor Day weekend again, uh, which is, I believe, the 3rd through the 5th of September. So hopefully we'll have some information about where we're going to have that in the next week or two, maybe. Uh, as soon as we do, we'll definitely let everybody know. Nick will let you know. Maybe you can release it on the show one night. Um, we're just kind of waiting right now and twiddling our thumbs, saying, Okay, where are we going? You know, we're, we're ready to, to go ahead and make this happen. Um, and then, of course, that, you know, that weekend before the Visions event, um, the entire Point One crew is going up to Mid-America. I say up because it's north of me. And we're there to volunteer for anything Jason, Christina, or Jared need. We will be there, whether it's Kevin scrubbing toilets and I'm serving beer, whatever we need to do. You know, the entire Point One crew will be there to support Mid America, and NRA and Pro Rock. You know, we're there to better the support and you know support our racers as well. Why do you get to serve beer? Why can't I serve beer? Because you drink martinis. You, you, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, but that's our schedule for 2021. We're going to have four races, and mainly because we're starting you know rather late in the season as far as securing dates. Uh, we have already started, or we have secured our dates for 2022, which are on our website. Um, with our season opener, going to be at Hawk Pride, yep. and I believe that would be March 22nd. I believe, uh, Nick, if you scroll down, you might be able to see it there. Uh, March so the 12th. March 12th. I'm sorry, I was 10 days off. Uh, which we're starting in March now because of King of the Hammers. I'm going to be spending a lot of time at King of the Hammers. Kevin and Heath and Carrie will be spending a lot of time at Hammers. So pretty much our whole crew will be at King of the Hammers for the next foreseeable future um, until they quit racing King of the Hammers. We'll probably be out there running 4400 and 4800 class. But that's a whole other conversation we can get into later. Uh, but we have secured our dates for 2022, and we are looking at parks as well for 2022. Well, I, I think it's important to talk about now because – you know, uh, one thing that uh, I, I have always heard with you guys is it's a race series by racers for racers. And, I mean, in the background, y'all both have race cars, right? I mean. Th this is a slow one. This is a wee rock car. <laughs> okay. but, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you, you want to touch on that for a second? Kevin, you can take that one. Well, yeah, um, we're, we're a race family, and – race family always sticks together and, and our race family wants to provide all the other racers a place 
that they feel good to go race at. And I think that we've done a really good job of that. I think somebody posted up on uh, Bouncer Life Group, I think some guy named Steven or something, um, he was talking about starting racing next year and what series to go race. And, of course, every series says, race me, race me, race me. And then Tim Sorensen posted up, race them all. When you're home, you're no, you'll know that you're home. And that, that point that he made hit me, hit me on the head like a nail. And, you know, that's very true. Go out there and try them all. We're not – trying to compete with any other series go try them all and you will know where you're comfortable at yep that's right that's that comment really did strike you know it really did strike me in the heart right there and 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 tim was right and i mean tim's raced every series out there i do believe and yep. and when he said that it really hit me it's like damn he's right you know that's crazy and uh, it's true. I mean, when you find the series that you are most comfortable with, that's who you're going to stick with. And it may not be the series. It may be the drivers that are there. It may be two or three particular people on the crew or whatever. Um, we, as point one, treat everybody as family. I mean, if somebody comes to me and says, hey, man, I forgot my food. Hey, we'll oh, feed yeah, you, bro. Yeah, no problem. No hey, I forgot yep. my helmet. I've got two helmets in my race trailer at all times. So, you know, we're there for the racers. We're going to do whatever we can to make sure that these racers have a good time and are able to race, and most importantly, be safe about it. Yeah. Because safety is priority. Um, real, real quick here, just after that comment, we've got – there's a gentleman in here, Greg Meadows, is asking, you know, who is this? Who's being interviewed? Is there a Facebook page? You know what I mean? So already there's – you know, the growth is there. People are going to see – you know, uh, people people are coming into the sport daily, daily. It's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we can have that attitude of no, come race with me. You know, we pay out the most or promise, promises, promises, whatever. But to me, it's important that the sport grows. We all come up together. There's no reason why that can't happen. Because like you said, you guys are not yeah. you guys are not doing knockout racing. You're not doing. Uh, certain things that other race series are doing. You're doing something very unique to point one, and that that's the bottom line. You know, we do what point and, one and I does. just saw. Yep, I just saw a comment from Sean Cross come across. It's one of the few that I was able to read, and it it it, it hit me because I was the one that helped out. But he said that he had forgotten his fire suit. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't raced, you know, and. I had my fire suit, I had my Hans, I had my helmet in the truck. I said, Sean, grab this in the back of my dually. So he went and grabbed it, and he was able to race. Otherwise, he would have been SOL and wouldn't have been able to race that day. That's right. At least with a fire suit that somewhat fit him. He could have looked, you know, with the uh, high waters on or something. But, um, you know, I told him, just, hey, grab my fire suit and use it. I mean, I've even let Sean take my bouncer uh, in 2019. Him and Jerry Foley took it all the way up to Kentucky and raced it. Um, I had three people race my rig that day, and I wasn't even there. <laughs> Timmy Cameron says, what's up? What's up, everybody? Howdy. What's up, Timmy? How you doing, brother? Uh, Jared Davidson agreed. No one goes hungry around these folks. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, uh, we've got Mel's Highway 10 Cafe that normally caters all of our races. Cool. Yes. Epic. And they, they, they have – some outstanding pulled pork sandwiches. Yes, and their nachos. Oh my gosh, their nachos are the bomb. Um, so real quick, Shelby, you had mentioned safety. Uh, I know that safety is a huge part of your program. Um, and uh, Kevin, I know that you had something that you wanted to talk about as far as safety goes. So can we roll into maybe the rules or what you know something along those lines real quick? Uh, sure. Um, we have a new set of rules for this year, um, and I'm sure that most of you will be very, very familiar with them, but they're, they're point one rules, and we're going to be pretty sticklers on them. Um, one of the things that point one requires are window nets. I'm not sure if everybody knows that yet, but we require window nets. <laughs> and that's the most asked question. Uh, yes. Pretty much the only thing that's changing this year, um, 
is the way that you attach your window nets to your rig. Uh, you need to go onto our website, make sure that you read the rules. Uh, the window nets have to be on the inside of the cage and they have to be fastened with a window net bar and not um, Velcro. We're not going to allow zip ties, ropes, or Velcro or tape anymore. Uh, the window nets have to be installed properly. The bottom of them can be uh, mounted with uh, hose clamps or a window net bar as such, but the release point has to be a window net bar. Uh, Nick, do you have a picture yes, of that? Sir, I, I'm loading it up right Clamp. now. Okay. My, most of y'all are trying to figure out how to install the window net bar on your rig and you don't want to weld on it and everything. And um, just so happens Shelby showed me a picture of Timmy's car and he uses these clamps on his car and I thought they were pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to show you the part number and the actual clamp itself from Summit. I think they're only like $25. So that's a great start to be able to clamp a window net bar into uh, your race rig on the inside of the cage. So that's pretty much the only change from um, in the rules that are more strict for 2021. And Timmy, I want to apologize. I did take pictures of your rig, kind of like a ninja, so you didn't see me. Yeah, there, there's definitely no hiding uh, secrets when when it comes to the show because everybody's watching. There's there's no. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I expect a, t a text from Timmy here in the next ten minutes <laughs> saying, "Why'd you take a picture without telling me?" <laughs> yeah. Uh, At least we didn't use it on here. This is true. <laughs> Yeah. No, no copyright there. Yeah. Well, we got the summit, uh, that summit picture up there. So you guys have the part list. I'll leave it up there for a minute. Um, and, uh, so that, that's good. Um, and, and like you said, the, the rules really haven't changed much. And, and if, and I will have the link to the website posted after this. So if you, if you do have any questions about it, uh, but, you know, rules are pretty much going to remain the same, if not get better. Like with this stuff right here, you know, I like I like that. No zip ties. No, that that shouldn't even be a thing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and you know, we can go ahead and tell people the website. It's very very easy to remember. It's literally point one dot racing. It cannot get any easier than that. It's burned into my brain nice. now as much as I've visited the site over the past few days, you know, as we make our last minute tweaks. And a lot of our drivers have found the website and started sending me messages asking a lot of questions. And I'm like, hey, bro, this website ain't released yet. Uh, but we had to publish it so we could actually see what it looked like live. So uh, for those of you 160, 180 people that's already seen it, congratulations. You got a, a sneak peek. Uh, we are constantly adding it to it, adding to it as we get more marketing partners on board for 2021. So you will see a lot of changes over the next few weeks. Okay. Um, Bub Meadows asking, when will the clothing line start up? I need a .1 hoodie. <laughs> Kevin, uh, let's see here. I was, I did have. I tell you what, guys, hold on just a minute. Y'all talk for a little while. I'm going to go get a couple of uh, drawings, and I'll be right back. Um, okay, cool. Miss Amy. I see he really prepared for this. Okay, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Miss Amy says, uh, put, put the uh, link to the website up there. Thank you, Miss Amy. Thank you for that. Um, Char oh, that's my wife. Yeah. Yeah. How many Amys <laughs> do you know? <laughs> Quite a few, okay, actually. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> uh, Charles Chris says, Shelby's brain is definitely burned. Yes. Has nothing to do with me getting dropped on my head as a baby. Right. Carrie Day, if I'm not in a timeout tent, I'm standing in line at the post office. We'll keep you updated. <laughs> no, those are all lies. She's either in the timeout tent or she's over at Mel's Highway 10 tent, you know, getting her some nachos or something to scarf <laughs> on. Yeah. Uh, heat day. If you if you come to a race not to see the race, just come eat the barbecue. Yeah. You will not regret it. <laughs> Adam. Adam, yeah. <laughs> Adam knows what you were going to do, Kevin. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go grab me another Yinling Hershey yes, beer. Sir. Okay, hold on a second. What, what, what did I miss? I've been, I've been uh, gone. Yeah, Adam, Adam said uh, that you were going to 
to use go to relieve yourself is basically what he said that you weren't going to get a I, I haven't I've only I've only had a half a martini yeah. so I don't need how, to how yet. do you uh, how do you drink your martinis what what alcohol do you use uh, kettle one um, just dirty okay. I, yeah, I drink uh, I drink gin martinis so I, I uh, oof yeah that's strong. <laughs> yeah, a little. Okay, so um, these are preliminary logos that we're working on. Um, they're my renditions, and these are pretty much the only things that we have been able to agree on. So probably for our, the front of our shirts, it's going to look something like this. And I don't. Can y'all see that? Yep. Because yep. I can't see it. Uh, it's a interco tire with a point one on the inside, and then for our big logo, we're looking at something like this. I like that. I like that. Just a little bit different, not as menacing, and um, we've got a uh, graphic artist here in town, they're working on it and they're going to put some more depth into it and some more colors and try to make it look better. But we also want something that's going to uh, look great on a t-shirt. Yeah, of course, of course. Absolutely. Um, so to, I guess to answer Bub's question, hopefully we'll have merch very soon. Sounds good. Because I do need a new hoodie. I'm wearing my work hoodie right now and this needs to say point one on it. I need a new, I need a whole new wardrobe. You and me both. <laughs> I've got a lot of good shop rags now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, shop shirts, lots of shop shirts. Adam Coots wants to know if you drink that martini with your pinky up. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, Chris Lyons, Shelby, thanks for the help with my friend's son in El Paso. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. That's what we're here for. Levi says, I'm new here. Welcome, Levi. Uh, ah, Levi, he's uh, he's going to be racing with us in 2021. He bought uh, Johnny Gibbs No Limit Razor that Johnny, I'm going to say, destroyed about 85% of it every race. But I think <laughs> he needs to put a GPS in it because it always loves to go the wrong way. <laughs> yep. So, and Levi, did, I would put a GPS the in it. Did almost fall out? Engine did almost fall out, yes. Engine almost fall out. Fell out. That's a, that could be an issue. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan, I'm surprised Gibbs isn't in here watching. That, uh, he's usually in here. Adam Coot says, that looks like Ryan Boyd's mountains from... Uh, <laughs> Bush. Yeah. <laughs> Bush. Hey, hey, Bush. Quick uh, shout out to D Pat's photography because uh, D Dylan was the one that did that rap and it is epic. That is an amazing rap. Yes, Dylan does amazing work. So yes, thank he you does. Dylan. You want to talk you for about? That, Dylan. Uh, you had mentioned you want to talk about the media uh, before we. Yeah. <clears throat> you want to talk about media for a second? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about media. Uh, first off, everybody that's in media, if you want to come shoot one of our races, whether it's photography or video, shoot myself or shoot the page of PM, and uh, we will get you on the gate list to get you in the race. What is that noise there? Is that your air conditioner? Mine? No, I think that was Nick's air conditioner. I don't know what that was. It was pretty loud. Um <laughs> But anybody that wants to get in, you know, or not get into the race, get into the race to shoot photography or video, definitely get with myself or Kevin. Uh, but we do want to thank all of our media partners that have supported us over the years. Uh, first off, because I did not get him typed in on my list, is uh, Lucas Tollison with Eagle Eye Productions. Nick, I know you're very familiar with his work. The, the drone footage that he gets is just amazing. Um, I, I could barely drive a drone or fly a drone by itself, much less trying to chase a daggum rock bouncer up a hill. Uh, Very true. So kudos to, to Lucas for that. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of ramble off some names here. Uh, Bub Meadows with Addictive Photography. Uh, he reached out to me the other day, so thank you for that, Bub. Uh, I'm hoping I get to see you at every race this year. Uh, Cody and Bearcat with Big Hill Media. 
some of the video those guys are dropping lately has just been game changing. Um, he put together a piece, I believe, of uh, Wade Good a few weeks a few weeks back, maybe a month or so ago, that was just epic. Uh, D Patch, we just mentioned Dylan. Uh, you cannot get any better than some of the still shots that he takes, and his design work for his T-shirts, his logos, his wraps, etc. Uh, Charles Karras, High Octane Films. I mean, he does all the editing for uh, Hillrod. Speaking of Hillrod, Mr. William Wallace, old son. Um, you know, thanks to both of those guys right there. Um, new guy to the to the game this year, Josh Dodd, Instigator Productions. Um, he messaged me a while back, said he wants to be a part of this thing, and he's going to come out and do a lot of filming for us. We're excited about that. The more cameras we can get on the hill, whether it's photo or video, the better. Uh, Curtis with Off-Road Lifestyle, thanks to you know, thanks to everything he's done the past few years, and we expect to see him out at the races this year. Um, Area 51 Films, not a lot of people are familiar with this guy. I think they're out of Houston, but they have a different take on drone footage. It's a, I guess, a virtual reality drone, if I'm not mistaken, Nick. You, you got to spend a little bit more time with those guys. Uh, but the, the footage they created of the Bounty Hill at Mid-America Finals was just epic. You know, getting to follow these bouncers up the hill. I'm, I think at one point they were inside the car at one point. Um, Jonathan Wright with Black Dog. I mean, he's you know one of your media partners. Great guy. We'd love to see him back in some races. We're going to be in Kentucky this year, so he doesn't have to travel that far. Uh, let's not forget about Cole Shirley and Mad Ram, right? I mean, Mad Ram, he was the OG that's been doing this for many, many, many years. Uh, Matt Myrick, Busted Knuckle Films. We expect to see him at some of our races this year. Um, Joey Donaldson, Work Hard, Play Hard. He comes to quite a few of our events. Uh, typically the ones in Alabama, I believe, is where he's at. But he's always putting together some good videos. And then, of course, yours on the hill with Nick and French. Can't forget you guys. Um, you know, every one of you guys, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I'll go ahead and say it for Kevin as well. Without you guys, this sport would not be growing to the level that it's growing without the different media coverage that you're providing these drivers and the, the, the series themselves. So you guys are just absolutely killing it. Yes, I agree. I feel like a lump on the log. I'm sitting over here doing nothing. Shelby's doing all the talking. Well, these, these guys, well that's my job. These guys are talking about uh, sound issues. I did hear some things, but I, I don't know what, what it is. It did sound like a compressor or something fired up, but uh, it's gone now. I don't know uh, I don't know what it was, but everybody's. Yeah, it was right when I started talking, but it went away after about 10 yeah, seconds. So know. that's cool. We're yep, here. Yep, that's right. Uh, Heath Day, while I'm not live, don't care to be. This series is literally a product of the racers. The response of the racers when we all put out there that we were no longer involved elsewhere was overwhelming. Yes. I, I can we were, say, go, go ahead, Kevin. We that, that day that all this went down, um, my thumbs were sore. I mean, we were, all <laughs> of us were on the phone, uh, responded to messages until 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was just nonstop. And the amount of support from all the racers that we received was unbelievable. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to do what we we did and create Point One was because of all of you guys out there and what y'all said to us that day. Yeah, and, and to elaborate with that, I mean, with what Kevin just said, I mean, I know my phone started ringing at 8.14 p.m. thanks to Johnny Gibbs. Um, and it did not stop until 2 o'clock in the morning when I just said, screw it, I'm putting my phone down and going to bed. Well, I get yeah. up for work between 4.30 and 5 every day, and it started back by 5.15. So it's, it was nonstop for about three days of racers, not just racers, but also fans as well. I mean, we had fans messaging us asking, what in the heck's going on? What are y'all going to do? I was only going to – we supported y'all because of you guys and not the name. And we're like, wow, okay, cool, thank you. Well, that's a lot to take. You know, it's, it's a lot happening in a short amount of time. Give us some time to kind of breathe and figure out what we're going to do. And, I, again, I'll take full responsibility. I started a group chat, and the defects, we all started talking, started talking, <laughs> and I think I finally got it into Kevin's head, and he went and had lunch with Heath and Carrie, and next yep. thing I know, we've got point one, so we're ready to rock and roll for 2021. And Jerry, I mean, Jerry, 
Zimbabwe deer hunting or something. He came back and found out he had a job again, so he was happy. <laughs> Josh Paris, uh, poor Jerry. Josh Paris says, "I don't know why Outlaw Two Racing Series didn't take off. <laughs> he he really wanted that name to stick." <laughs> hey, we really wanted to get away from the pirated names, Josh. Yeah, and, and I want to be clear too that I, I you know, when when we d- decided to do this show, uh, there there is no bias on this show at all. Everybody that comes on here is is into rock racing in one way, shape, or form, whether you're running the event or whether you're racing or, or whatever, whether you're a mega fan, it doesn't matter. So we're not on here to burn anybody. We are not on here to – we are simply no. here to uh, talk about this new this new event that's, that's uh, going to start taking place next year. We're all very excited about it. We've had literally 100 people pretty much the entire time in here watching, which never happens, you know, uh, so – it's a big deal, y'all. This is this is going to be huge. Um, and this is the kind of feedback that we love seeing and hearing. I mean, like you said earlier, Nick, the comments are scrolling so fast. I've got my laptop over yeah. here. I can't even keep up with the comments. They're going so yeah. fast. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jeremy Garris says, get the Summit page off there unless they're a sponsor. Uh, Jeremy, I only had that up there so y'all <laughs> could see what they were talking about as far as the window nets goes. But it's gone now. Uh, let's Jeremy, if you have oh. an in with getting them as a marketing partner for us for 2021, let me know. Yeah, I've sponsored them. Yeah. Uh, Bob Meadows, hey, Nick, Total Off-Road Podcast said some good things about your show. You should get with them and Jesse Williams and do uh, – I've, I mean, I've been on Jesse Williams' show twice. So uh, – and if – yeah, we could, we could definitely do one big show, that's for sure. I'm all about it. Uh, Heat Day, while I'm – oh, we already talked about that. How did I go backwards? Uh, Miss Amy, again, helping with the with the links to Facebook pages. Again, we'll have all that stuff up there. We'll post all of that, the Point .1 website. Although, is it, is it available yet, Shelby? You said? Okay, yes, the okay. website live. is live, okay. and so is obviously the Facebook okay. page. They, they were both launched. Uh, the website was launched yesterday. Okay. But it wasn't announced, but I guess now we're announcing it at racing.com. Go check it out. You can get all the rules, information, marketing partners, media partners, and race schedule. And you can you can type it in point one, or you can type it in point one, which with O N E dot racing. Either way is going to take Sweet. you there. Point one dot That's racing. Uh, Dustin Speakman, I want to know how Kevin got his wife to hand deliver a drink to the garage. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> I begged and I pleaded. Um, I told her that I'd be out here talking and I'd be thirsty, and she would please because I was out here 30 minutes before uh, the the podcast started, and I knew I'd, it'd be gone by the time it started. So I told her to delay it a little bit. Uh, John John Gibbs is watching. He says y'all can kick my ass. <laughs> uh. Johnny boy. Miss Amy St. Clair says, yes, humbled by the overwhelming support from the racers, fans, and sponsors. Thank you all. Yes. Uh, you guys just don't understand. I took Heath and Carrie to lunch. I guess it was probably on the 19th or the 20th. I don't know. I don't remember which day because those days were all a blur. And I, I sat them down, and um, I didn't tell them what I wanted to talk about at first. But they knew, and... I said, I'm just going to get right down to it. And they said, let's do it. Um, there was not really any hesitation at all. They were just, you know, they knew something had to be done. They knew that a lot of racers would be let down if we didn't start a series. No doubt. Uh, yep. And I want to say that Heath's answer and whole attitude changed from the 15th to the 18th or the 19th, whatever day it was, Kevin had lunch with him. Because uh, I had lunch with Kevin, Heath, and Kerry in uh, Hope, Arkansas. And it was, nope. Yeah, that was the straight-up answer was no. There was no talking him into it or anything. And then I guess Kevin patted his back right or rubbed his head right or something. But uh, Heath definitely <laughs> needs to get his head checked. Uh, yeah. I think we're all a little crazy. <laughs> Let's see. Kenneth Cozine says, sure would love to see every other series come on the show and talk with racers and fans really makes the sport more personable. Looking forward to the 2021 season. Uh, Kenneth, um, I- I've had Zach Garner on the show as a representative for the NRRA. Uh, I've also had uh, 
um, uh, Clyde's daughter on. Get Garian. Trip on. I had Garyon on uh, representing the NRRA. I had Trip on. Uh, so we, we've had uh, we've had um, we've had them all on. But but yeah, I agree. They should be out there more often. And and I usually say this at the end, but for for y'all, uh, since we're talking about it right now, you know, this is an open invitation for y'all to come back. So if if you want to come back on the show to to talk about anything, whether it's talking about a race that just happened the weekend before, how it went, and so on, or a race that's coming up, promoting a race that's coming up, please uh, just let me know. Let let's get it on. Let's let's talk about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's been often joked about that I live stream constantly, that I'm always live streaming. And, and yeah, that's, that's kind of true. But at the same time, it, it's bringing the, the race scene to the people, you know, like a 24-hour news station, if you will. You know what I mean? It's, uh, you know, yep. all rock bouncing all the time. And that's, that's, that's really what it is, you know? I just wish we had internet down at the right, most of the race hills so that we could do this more oh, often. Yeah, that would be epic. Yeah, that would definitely be that would definitely be cool. Um, but but not all places are going to be like uh, Mid America where you have freaking fiber no. fiber out to the race. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That's another. I mean, that's like flat nasty. You know, you go to flat nasty as soon as you pull off the highway, just shut your phone off because you will have yeah. nothing until you leave on yeah. Sunday. Put it in airplane mode and save the battery for shooting film because that's about all your phone's going to be good for. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. Heath Day, I will say this as well. There are some really good friends still involved with Outlaw. By all means, go race with them. We want to see all series do well. And, and I and that, that kind of yes. yes. reiterates what I'd said before. We are not on here to bash any series or any one. We are just – strictly spitting the news and, and talking about uh, what's to come, the future, you know? We can't change the past. It is what it yes. is. Yep. So we're moving forward. Yes, sir. Um, Adam Coots, is that you breathing, Shelby? Shelby, you do have a mic right up close to your nose there. Yeah, I probably do because I'm wearing my headset. It's easier to hear, especially in the shop, so probably. Uh, Chris Lyons says, Trip Pulling, never heard of him. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what what else, y'all? Uh, we've been we've been going for over an hour now. I can't believe that. It doesn't feel like it at all. Um, I know we had a bunch of questions. We kind of talked about the rules. Um, we talked about the top the top ten, and then going into the third hill there, and kind of those rules. Um, we talked. We should talk about the logos. Uh, how do drivers get signed up? They, on our website, uh, there's a big, huge button that says registration. All they have to do is click that, and they're, they have the availability to read the, the waiver and the rules again. Um, once they scroll to the bottom of the page, there is a registration form, and Ian, who has been instrumental in taking the website off of me, has designed the website, designed a new registration page, and it's pretty cool. And you can pretty much register for one race, or if you wanted to go ahead and register and pay for all the races, you can do it all at one spot, right then and there. That's, that's uh, very, very helpful. Very helpful. Um, and uh, I guess to go a little bit further into the race registration is – uh, in years past, there has always been a, a called a late fee for registering past 6 p.m. on Sunday before the race. We have eliminated that moving into 2021. So whether you register today or you register on Saturday morning at 8.30, the price remains the same. And, Kevin, I'm not sure if you want to go over the, the race registration fees but we can dive into that real quick. Um, if you just want to give me a yes or no, Kevin, I can take it. Go ahead. Okay, so the unlimited class is $200 uh, per race. So if you race all four races this season, it'll be $800. Uh, you can pay in advance for all four races. And UTV, or excuse me, side-by-side -side class is $150 uh, per race. So we've essentially saved you 50 bucks if you're a late registration. Um, so, I guess that's really all I want to say on that. 
Now, uh, racers, um, if you do race with us and you don't plan on paying until you get to the race, at least go online and register so that we know that you're coming uh, because Saturday mornings are a little hectic for me and trying to get your name typed into the software, sometimes it gets messed up a little bit. And not to mention, there is uh, two different options, one to just register and pay later or register and pay now. And if you click the pay now, you need to select only one. So if you select race one pay now, don't select race one pay later because it will immediately take you to the PayPal screen, if that makes sense. And if any drivers have questions getting registered, definitely give me a call. I can kind of walk you through it over the phone. It's very, very easy. I mean, we had a, I had a guy at work try it the other day. He's like, oh, this is easy. I can do this. And he's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, it was Ian. Okay, I'll say that. It was Ian. Okay. Crystal, uh, Crystal Yon says, the only series that pays out in cash at the end of the race day. <clears throat> yes. And I'm assuming that remains the same? That will remain the same, and we have no plans on changing that. Uh, Bebo says, that's awesome. Not that we'll get to experience that, but it sure is going to be fun. Uh not sure what that reference is. I, I thought that was about the uh, the payout thing. Um, let's see. Taylor Pickett. Taylor Pickett joining us. What about that, y'all? Uh, w- w- would you guys have um, – because I, I know that y'all have somebody that usually does prayer, uh, you know, slash safety checks uh, on, on the starting line. Is that something that you guys will continue to do with point one? Yes, most definitely. Yes, and and another thing that's non-negotiable in my eyes and Kevin's eyes, I'll speak for Kevin on this one, is we will always have a national anthem and we will always have a pre-race prayer. Um, And again, Taylor, I've told you this on the phone. I'll tell you you're live in front of 85 people right now that you're welcome to show up to any race. And we could definitely use the help for driver prayers because we do run two at a time. And it's, it's fast pace, so the more people, the better. Uh, hopefully, we'll have Steve Howell come back with us for 2021 and uh, provide the pre-race prayer as well as the driver prayer at the line. Excellent. Yes. I like it. Uh, and and that, that's huge because Taylor, Taylor is a big part of this show. Uh, and uh, I love to, love to see him. I'd love to see him doing it full time, honestly. But... Uh, I know he's a busy guy. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jonathan Arnold, good question. Are y'all going to still try the meet and greet with the drivers? Yes. If I have anything to say about it, yes. Um, that was actually a suggestion that Bub Meadows turned us on to last year, or excuse me, this year, and it really turned out to be a pretty good, you know, pretty big hit for the fans. Um, again, it's like herding cats, getting the drivers to stay at their rigs instead of going and walk on the race hills. But uh, we will remain, you know, keep that as an option. Um, we need to fine tune it slightly to make sure that we can make sure the racers are at their cars for the fans to show up and get autographs or talk to the drivers, etc. Um, I know Jade McNew was really excited when she had a couple fans come up to her at Hooter Holler. Uh, little did she know that she was getting a race car that day. So um, I think the drivers enjoy it. They get to speak with their fans, and then you know the, the fans get to meet their driver and really connect yeah, with them. I, I like that. Yep. I like that. Um, they, they eat that stuff up, man. Like this show, having the drivers on this show, uh, and then the per- personal meet and greet, stuff like that, man. It's just they, they want to know the drivers. They want to know who's behind the wheel, and I think that's great. I think, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's absolutely great. Um, only thing about that is we do ask when we say, okay, it's time to clear the staging area that all the spectators please get back to their, the other side of the fence behind the safety barriers so we can start the race on yep. time. Okay, along with that. Uh, Alex Kennedy, are Canadi- Canadians still welcome? <laughs> yes. Anytime, Alex. Sorry you can't come across that border. Yes, uh, and, and also Canadians, it's close enough, but the boys up in Wisconsin, I mean, shout out to those guys for, you know, fully committing to 2020, and I got a full commitment in writing the other day from Jeremy Burgess that 
um, himself and I believe four other guys from Wisconsin, which I call Canada, are <laughs> planning to come down and race the entire 2021 season with us. So uh, thank you to those guys. I mean, those guys really show dedication like Alex did in the years past. I mean, the poor guy drove 18 hours for 30, 40 seconds of runtime and then would drive 18 hours home. So yep, thank you guys for that. And we did we did make an attempt to have a race up up north this year. It just didn't work out. Well, hey, yep. Never know. There's always 2022. That's her. That's yeah, exactly. Her. There's a bunch of two BDs. Yep. yep. Excellent. Speaking of Steve Howell, Steve Howell joining us. Uh, Steve, I would love to have you on this show, sir. I, I know that you've probably got a a tale or two that you could probably uh, tell us all. So so please, if, if that's something you would consider. Let me know, and I'll message you. Uh, message you when I get done with this. Um, I, you know what you need, Nick. Instead of Steve, you need to get his grandmother I'd on the love, show. I'd love to have them both. Grandma I Sticky. Yeah. I would. I would rather have her. <laughs> I, I'd rather have. I'd rather have her than Steve, because Grandma Sticky. She has mailed me four letters in the past few months, and shame on me and my wife for not mailing her back. But you know, I think we have once or twice. We need to get back to her. Uh, but I love that woman to death. She kind of came into my life about the time my grandmother passed. And she helped fill the void in my life that was so needed. So, Grandma Sticky, I hope you can watch this soon. But we love you, and we want to see you back at some races in 2021. Yeah, no doubt. Um, uh, what I love about this show and what it's become is the moms, even the grandmoms, have feel safe enough to come in and watch this and they get to keep up with the sport and, and keep up with what their boys are doing or girls, you know, for that matter. And, and uh, their favorite racers and the family, the off-road racing family that they've made when they go to the races, Larry Krogh's mom, uh, you know, is, is always joining us. Jake Pike's mom is always, always going to the events and stuff like that. So um, that's, I love this sport and I love that family atmosphere about it. And we, it, it always seems to get brought up with every single episode that we do, you know, that, that family atmosphere and, and with point one, it's, it's very obvious that, that, that family atmosphere is, is tight. It's, it's uh, full force, no doubt. And speaking yeah, of really, uh, Jake Pike's mom, oh, sorry, Kevin, go ahead. I really think that, you know, everybody has said by racers for racers. I think we may need to change our motto just to family. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but going back to what I said about Jake Pike's mom, Miss Sally Weber, she still owes me a hat. So, Miss Sally, if you're watching, I expect another hat like I gave you at uh, Mid America back in September. Because I really could use you know, you know, that right about now wearing it. She knows what I'm talking about, and a few others do. I'm surprised she she may be watching. I, I haven't been able to keep up with how many people are joining us because uh, it's it's coming in so fast. But um, but yeah, she she's a norm. She watches quite regularly. Um, yes, she does. I yep. see her popping in all the time. So we love some Miss Sally Weber and definitely Miss Kathy Krogh. Oh my yep. gosh, I love those two women to death. And Kathy with her yep. blue hair, I saw her at uh, NRA finals yep. was just uh, or epic. was it pink? I thought because it was uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I think. Yeah. yeah oh, it, it was, was pink. Uh, you're right. You're right. I saw somebody else with blue hair, but you're right. Her hair was pink. Yep. So I love that woman She's to death. Always... And I saw I saw a comment about beer. If anybody's asking, I'm drinking Yinling Hershey Ch Hershey chocolate porter. This stuff and he can't is even like get the, it in Texas. No, I have to get it from imported from Arkansas. But uh, it's like they literally just melted a Hershey, Hershey uh, kiss and put some bubbles in it. It's awesome. Trip Pullen joining us. How are you, Trip? Uh, Dustin says the best beer is free beer. What's up, Trip? Yes. At Mid America. At Mid -America. That's yes. Yes. <laughs> Jamie Jones, point one family apparel line portions of sales go to driver's pot. Pretty much, you know, everybody, what they don't realize, they think that we're sitting here back making millions and millions of dollars, and, and that's really not the, the, not the fact. Pretty much every single dollar that point one makes is going to go back into the driver's um, if we don't have to buy equipment, it's going to go back to payouts. Mm -hmm. And it did in 2020 by having an end-of-season uh, UTV payout that was not expected. 
if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yes. So it, you know, it did go back to it in 2020 and uh, 2021. If if we keep bringing in marketing partners like we are, it's going to be a great season. Uh, Jed Harper, good question. With only four racers, are you still keeping points for a championship? Yes. Yes. The point system has changed. Um, previous years or previous uh, series um, have done a, a staggered point system, and it increases or decreases by points at a certain rate. But our point system for 2021 is going to be there's going to be one point difference between each place. So things are going to be a little bit tighter for all the racers in 2021. Jonathan Arnold, to be a millionaire racing, you have to start as a billionaire. Yes, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Very true. Yes. Very true. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jerry Foley, we are always upgrading equipment and putting money in payouts. Yep. Yep. No yes. Doubt about it. Oh, and I guess now would be a good time to make our special announcement, Kevin, if you're ready to do that. You're right ahead. All right, so, I mean, I, I know, Nick, you said you wanted to kind of get into yes. the Visions thing a little bit later. Well, it's been an hour and 20 minutes, so let's go ahead and roll into Visions. Uh, first off, like we said earlier, myself and the entire Point One crew will be at Mid-America. Maybe not everybody for the full eight days. I plan on being there for the full eight days because my boss does lets me do what I want. But um, we are going to be there to assist Mid-America, NRA, Ultra 4, and Pro Rock for anything that they need whether it be record, recovery, hanging tape, staging drivers, et cetera, we'll be there to do whatever they need. Uh, but something that Kevin came up with the other day when a lot of the drivers that typically only run our series started getting invites to the Visions event, uh, Kevin decided that we were going to help five drivers um, with their I forgot about team. that. <laughs> yeah. So I just spent a little bit of your money, Kevin. I don't know if you want to say how much we're going to help, but we are going to, if you raced with us in 2020, um, where Kevin and myself and Heath and Carrie and Jan and Jerry were, um, we are going to put your name in a randomizer or in a hat or something like that. And we will do a drawing live on our Facebook page, probably in the driver's group. Um, and we are going to help five drivers with their entry fee for the Visions event. We know it's a little bit steep, and not everybody's got the $1,000 for it, but we're going to help five drivers that help support us huge, all these years. So yes. if you're invited, uh, I do have a thread in the drivers-only group. Uh, go in there and make sure that you put a post up with your screenshot saying which class, whether it's UTV or Bouncer, and whether it's Hill Killer or Knockout, etc. Let us know so we can um, get this uh, wrapped up and try to help out five drivers. That is huge, y'all. That is awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. I mean, it's not much, but it's you know, it's it's what we can do. I wish we could do more, but starting out, there's not a whole lot of dollars in the bank. Uh, but we're definitely going to do what we can, and if we can kind of leverage some of our marketing partners to help step up as well, we are yep. definitely going to do that. But uh, you know, Kevin Taylor made that decision, kind of brought it to me, and we talked about it, and we presented it to the group, and nobody had a problem with it. So, uh, drivers, that is coming up. Hopefully, in the next week or two, we will be able to have that drawing live. Have they announced all the um, all the invites? Have they sent them all out? out? I have not seen yeah. UTV knockout yet. Yeah. Uh, Christina and, and uh, like Ultra Four and the Mega Trucks as well. So. That's, we're still waiting on those. Yeah, I mean, only ones that we're really, you know, worried about is UTV and bouncer yeah, knockout right. classes. Yeah. Um, if if Derek West gets invited, then we will throw his name in the hat because yeah. he did race with us in 2020. I mean, he's a two-time yeah. series champ, so yeah. um, I believe two-time, maybe one time, but I believe I believe he's two-time series champ. Um, so we will, you know, we'll put his name in the hat if he gets invited from the Ultra Four side. So I've talked with Christina, and she's supposed to send me a list as soon as it gets finalized, and then we can compare with, you know, who raced with us in 2020, and we can put the list together and have so a draw. That's that's huge, y'all. Um, so all all you got to do is, so what uh, what can we have drivers do if they've raced with y'all and they were selected for Visions? 
should they contact you guys? Should they go to the point one? I know you're not pushing that group, that driver's group, but do you want to talk about that real quick so they can go in there and register? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I started a thread in the, in the drivers only group and sorry, spectators, fans, this is only for drivers. Um, and obviously point one crew, but, um, just go in there and find the thread that I started the other day, post a screenshot of your invite. And of course I'll have to cross compare with what Christina did. And then I'll have to go back and look at last year's drivers, uh, drivers list to make sure you're on there. If you're on there, great. Your, your name goes in the hat. Now, one thing I think we need to do is like in Adam Coots's case, Adam has been invited for UTV and Bouncer. So technically I think his name should go in the hat twice and he could possibly, you know, be helped out twice on it. That, that's, you know, still to be determined because we do have a couple that got invited for both classes. Uh, so just jump on the drivers group and comment up, guys. Uh, Jamie Jones. Jamie Jones says, I will sponsor two drivers, 250 on an en entrance fee for Visions, but Shelby has to say he wears Depends and they are soaked. <laughs> say it. Hey, it's for the... They're about it's to be because I'm on my third driver, beer. Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any of these drivers know that I will do anything for them, guys. Um, I talked with a driver until I think it was 1 a.m. the other night. And it was just more of a, hey, I just want to talk. So these drivers, you know, if you guys need anything, definitely know that you can reach out to me at any time. Uh, Kevin's a guy that likes to go to bed at 8.30. He's, he's a little bit of an old yep. fart. So uh, I'm, I'm past, over 10 right PM, past 10 p.m., he puts his phone on Do Not Disturb, but mine stays right by the bedside. So <laughs> if y'all need me, you know, definitely don't yeah. be afraid to reach out. Uh, Bob Meadows, good question. Go, go ahead, Kevin. Yep. Oh, I got some. Shelby. Yes. Um, we forgot to mention something about um, the guys that won drag races at Mid America last year. Oh yes. Uh, I, well, I did reach out to all of those drivers individually, uh, but last year, or excuse me, this year at finals, uh, we were drag racing bouncer and side by side classes. Top three drivers in each class won free race entries for 2021 in point one. Uh, even though they did not win them under a point one direction, they won them under our direction. So we're going to honor those those wins. So Sam Carter, you have an entire full season of UTV class uh, free racing. Uh, Wade Goode has three free races, and Kyle Cahill has one race. Uh, in the bouncer class, Mr. Josh Cochran, I think he ran an identical 3.879 or something like that in both lanes. Um, he ended up winning a full season for 2021. Larry Krogh with, I believe, was second. I'd have to go back and look, uh, but I believe he got three races, and I cannot remember who was third off the top of my head. But we will honor those race winnings for 2021. It wasn't Timmy, was it? He was driving uh, Bad Influence. No, it wasn't Timmy. Timmy, Timmy was running uh, Bad Influence, but if somebody can pop in and tell us who the third-place driver was for the Bouncer Drag Race, and I would appreciate it. Um, I typed it up the other day, but it's on the phone that I'm using right now for this video call. Uh, Bob Meadows, are you going to extend the race season eventually, like more races per year? Yes. Yes. If y'all, if and this is what we're going to do tonight, guys. Um, we're not going to post our rules or anything up on our Facebook page for a while. Um, so everybody needs to go to point one dot racing and look at our rules, our waiver, look at the registration, and especially look at the events because not only do we have 2021 on there, we already have 2022 yep. dates listed on our website. So everybody needs to go to our website and read the rules. If you have a question on the rules, please contact us so we can get that resolved before race season starts. Yes. We have plenty of time to discuss everything. Uh, one other thing. Um, alternate driver. That's a huge change for 2021, yes. That's a huge change for 2021. I just realized that. Now, last year we um, had an alternate driver for one race. Uh, for 2021, racing with point one, you can choose one driver 
to race for any race or all the races for you during that year. They just can't be racing for their own points. So it's kind of like a team thing. You can choose a, a driver to race with you, and if you get hurt, hurt your back, break your arm or something, that driver can pick up the rest of the season for you. Okay. That's, that's yep. huge because that's happened. So, you know. Yes, yes. And that's what prompted this rule change for 2021 was what happened in 2020. Jeremy Burgess, uh, he says, yep, 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeremy. I wasn't going to call you out, but you just called yourself out. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Foley says the same thing. His phone's always on. Um, Dan Carter says, I'll wear soap, uh, soaked depends during the race for that 250. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Jamie says, Dan Carter Racing, send me a message. So maybe maybe there's a little uh, sponsorship uh, going on right there, man. I, I freaking love this sport, I, you know. <laughs> and, and Jamie Jones, I, I want to say something about Jamie Jones real quick. Um, I met Jamie um, somewhere in 2020. I don't remember exactly which race, but me and him just kind of clicked and kind of hit it off. And when I was at the NRA finals, I ended up just – I was just dog bit, you know, just dog tired. And I ended up sitting down on the bleachers and lo and behold, there's Jamie Jones sitting right next to me. We probably talked for two hours. So what a great guy, stand up guy. He loves the sport. His son's going to start racing, um, short course racing, I believe at mid America in 2021. So just, just a great guy. If you don't know who Jamie Jones is, you need to, you need to really find him and introduce yourself. Um, and speaking of Jamie, uh, something that we started last year was the fan of the race. And I have no plans to stop that. We will continue to have the fan of the race in 2021 where you can win some free swag at the race, but you have to physically be at the race. And how you can get yourself entered is like, comment, and share on our on our social media post, um, Facebook and Instagram. Um, last year we had Kerry Gordon won. We had uh, Chrissy Courtney, I believe, Bex Arnold Mark Oral, so, you know, those are just four of the names right off the top of my head that, you know, we will continue it, and we'll be slinging some point one merch. Uh, Carrie's going to be over there in the tent, so she'd love to for you to come see her, and if I tell you there's koozies at the table, I'm pretty sure there's going to be koozies at the table this year. Uh, let's see. We've got a bunch of people chiming in saying it was bad influence that was third, so that was Timmy because Matt didn't drive. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so that would be uh, – well, for actually, Matt, Timmy right, drove okay, for okay. Matt. Yeah, so Matt. Yeah, so that would actually yep. go to Matt Schistler then. So Matt's got one free race for 2020 in the Unlimited class. Uh, so whoever said that, thank you for clarifying that because I can't go back that yeah, far. It's been two months now. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel Cornell says, can't wait for 2021. Appreciate you hanging out with us, Daniel. Um, Corey Matthews. Is he still racing? I heard she retired. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle. Yeah, Danielle. I heard she retired. Danielle. Uh, let's see. Speaking of Daniel Cornell, I, I had a uh, video, Daniel. I, I found a video of my last uh, Hilo cast, my last Hilo jump. And I was going to play it uh, before the show started today, but I forgot to. Maybe I'll play it if y'all stand by after uh, we get done with these gentlemen. I'll play it before we uh, before we sign off. Um, Bob Meadows says, fan of the race for each race. Put them all in a hat at the end of the year and draw them. Send them to finals. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's an idea. That's something that's we can idea. definitely discuss internally. Um, another thing that's been discussed for the racers um, is a pass around trophy that you earn yes. at each race. Something maybe like best of show or something like that. And, you know, it's, it's your job to be able to keep that trophy all year long. Kevin, I, I just, uh, you broke up there for a minute. Okay, I got you back now. Okay. Okay. 
Now, um, we're going to have a pass around trophy for best of show or something like that, where if you put on the best of the show for one of the races, you get the trophy, um, but you could lose it at the next race. So um, it's your job to try to keep that trophy all year. However, if you're in control of that trophy all year, do not expect a podium at all that year. So, Johnny Gibbs, I'm calling your name, buddy. I expect you to take this trophy home. Levi, I'm expecting you to take this trophy home. Levi, he just said backflip for days. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yes, I'm going to grab another beverage. Excuse me. Uh, Kevin, we've been going for an hour and a half, man. We usually average about an hour long shows, so this has been absolutely great. Very, very, very informative. If there is anything, is, is there anything else that yes. you want to, that you need to get out that we need to talk about before we before we wrap up? No, I just want to let all the racers know, all the fans know that um, our family, our race family, me and and Shelby, Amy, Heath, Carrie, Jerry, Jan, uh, Ian, and and Catherine, uh, we're going to do everything that we can to provide you guys with the best race experience possible. We are going to run a quality, family-friendly race that everybody can come out and enjoy, and we would love for you guys to continue to race with us. Absolutely. Yes. It's good, no, no clean problem. entertainment. Yeah. Uh, yes. I know I don't always have the, the cleanest language in the group, but I, I think I do pretty daggum well on the microphone at the races. Uh, those of you that listen to the podcast, it was a whole nother audience this morning that I had. So uh, if you were offended, <laughs> I'm sorry. But I do clean it up for the race, and I know there's going to be kids there. I mean, there, you look at Perival's side, there's about 37 kids over there, and I do clean it up at the race hill. No doubt. No doubt. Is there any uh, – you, you guys want to get into thanking uh, uh, partners and stuff like that? Yes, yes. We can go ahead and start thanking our uh, our marketing partners for uh, the 2021 season moving in. Uh, first off, honestly, we would not be as far as we are today if it wasn't for Ian Boyce and Steve Summers with Total Offroad Podcast. Uh, if you listen to their show that dropped this morning, great. You have a lot of the same information we provided tonight. We provided a little bit more tonight, though. Um, they've stepped on board to kind of give a race recap after every race I will be on the show and we will be providing a race recap probably 15 20 minutes per episode um, and a lot of great from uh, cross promotional things um, Liberty Mountain Fabrication Mr. Phil Lacardi aka Shock Jesus if you don't know who Phil is in the off-road racing world you're really missing out so Phil stepped on board um, he is one of the premier shock tuners in the country. I'm not going to say he's the only one, but he's the only one that I will personally deal with. Um, Kevin, unfortunately, can't deal with him because he runs those nope. springless uh, struts over there. Um, so, Phil Licardi for not not only shock tuning, but also your shock sales. Whether you need a set of you know coilover, emulsion coilovers, or internal bypass for a 4800 car. Definitely hit up Phil. He's got some of the best prices and his customer service. You just cannot beat it. Um, one that I'm very, very proud of that I literally got secured about an hour before we came on tonight was uh, Thompson Motorsports of Texas. Uh, a lot of our racers do run Thompson Motorsports engines. My old car, Voodoo Child, has a Thompson Motorsports Dart 427 in it. Uh, Jess Reed has one. Uh, Jeremiah Strauss just picked up an engine from them, and I know there's a few others that's bought engines from these guys, but one of the premier LS engine uh, builders, I'm going to say the best in Texas. Again, just customer service beyond beyond this world. Uh, Fuelworks, if you're not familiar with Fuelworks uh, gas cans, check them out on Facebook, check them out online. Uh, I think you can get them at Bass Pro, Cabela's, Ace Hardware, etc. It's the only EPA approved uh, fuel can that will actually flow gas. It's not a race can, but it flows faster and it actually seals. Uh, so fuel Mr. works Tim with Hooper. an X. Yes, fuel works with an X. I'm sorry. Uh, so thank you, Tim Hooper, for stepping on board for 2021. Uh, our recovery crew this year will be known as the Crawler Off-Road Recovery Crew. Uh, it's a small outfit up out of Michigan, I do believe. They make some really cool synthetic ropes, kinetic ropes, and uh, shackles. Uh, all synthetic stuff, pretty much any color you want. Um, 
it's pretty obvious our group colors are green this year, so I'll be ordering green winch ropes front and rear for my car. Um, Rad Designs, Mr. Roy up in Oregon, I believe, it's in Oregon or Washington State. Uh, he makes what they call a VX shifter. And it's what I have in my car here. I actually have the first one he ever made. Uh, but he makes it for pretty much any transmission. You can set the gates where you want. Really, really cool products. Definitely check out Rad Designs, R-A-D-E-S-I-G-N-S uh, products. Uh, Taylor Pickett, uh, some little cross-promotional stuff going with him, Mr. RPM Ministries. Again, Taylor's welcome to come to all of our races. Uh, Nick, you know what we did for him a few weeks ago on your show. And he messaged me the other day saying he ordered a bunch of her, uh, sh shirts, hats, hoodies, and stickers. So that was really cool to kind of get that feedback from him. Uh, Sam's 4x4 Tulsa up in, uh, well, obviously Tulsa, Oklahoma. Pretty much anything you can imagine for your off-road rig, they've got it. Great guys, definitely get with them. Uh, we've mentioned Mel's Highway 10 Cafe. They're at every race, and they're slinging some just excellent barbecue so don't get too full on the hillside uh robert mcadams one of our racers actually wolf creek customs he's an authorized squatch box dealer um that's what my table is to my left right now is my little squatch box cooler uh it made me want to leave my yeti at home most days uh armor coating out of tennessee is along with middle tennessee designs or mid tennessee designs are creating designing and powder coating our trophies for 2021 so thanks to those guys for stepping up uh, pretty big for us because otherwise we'd be having to pay somebody to cut our trophies and powder coat them and give them to the racers. And racers, we did listen to your feedback about no sharp edges. We have some preliminary designs that look pretty daggum cool. Uh, we're not going to really show those to anybody until the first race. So if you want to see what they look like, come race and try to win it from Timmy uh, or Wade or Wyatt. So one of those three guys I expect to be taking home a trophy next year. Um, we do have quite a few more marketing partners we are working with and trying to secure deals with. I had one I was working up until two minutes before the show started. Wasn't able to fully secure the deal, but just fully expect to see a lot more marketing partners coming on board here in the next few weeks. So, you know, thank you to every one of you guys. We could not do it without y'all, and we hope to have a successful 2021 and beyond with y'all by our sides. No doubt. Uh, Kevin, anything to add to that? Nope. Uh, Nick, I appreciate you, Shelby. I appreciate you, Heath, Carrie, Jerry, Ian, Catherine, Jan. Guys, none of this would Amy. happen without y'all. I appreciate – and Amy. I appreciate y'all <laughs> more than you will ever, ever understand. Yes, I mean, and like Kevin said at the beginning of the show, if there was one piece of the puzzle missing, we would not be able to do this. So no. uh, thank you to everybody for coming back and putting your trust in, in not only me, but, but Kevin as well, and knowing that we can do this in 2021, and, and the racers for trusting us as well and, and really pushing us to do this. Oh, that must be, that's my um, heater. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay. Yeah, we figured it out now. <laughs> hey, real quick, uh, Heath says, just so everyone knows, we are an off-road racing series. You may be on hills, you may be barrel racing, uh, you uh, racing in a field, you may be drag racing. The main thing is having fun. We'll definitely uh, do everything we can to keep everyone happy. No doubt. Yes. Uh, yes. You never, with Heath, yep. you never know what you're going to get. I like it. Yes. Uh, Jerry Foley, thanks, Dick, for letting them come on tonight. My pleasure, Jerry. My pleasure. Uh, Bebo says one big race family tonight. That's point one. Yes, sir. Um, good walk, good show. And I, I want to shout out uh, Brian Bebo Watt. I mean, that guy yep. with the Bounce of Life group. He's just like you are, Nick. He yep. is a fan of the sport, and he wants to see this sport grow. He doesn't show any bias, you know, on his page, and, and we love that. And, dude, I'm not going to lie. When he changed his profile picture to the Point One logo, I almost shed a tear that day. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. And, and then to see, you know, like William Wallace do it and several other fans do it and uh, Reno King with Armor Coder did it. I mean, it's just the amaz amazing the amount of support that we have received. And I know I've said that a hundred times and I'll say it a hundred more times. 
we wouldn't be doing this without you guys, yep. the fans and the racers and, and the media guys. I mean, can't leave you guys out. I mean, everybody plays a integ- very important part in why we're back doing what we're doing. Yes, we all need our heads checked, but yep. I don't think we'd have yeah. it any other way. Uh, Ian, uh, and, and I think we can wrap it up with this. Can we start the race season yet? <laughs> yes. Oh, Ian has some a new headset. He is just dying to try it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, quick story about Ian, uh, then we can jump off here, is uh, Ian volunteered to come down to Flat Nasty this past season, and one of the things he asked for, I think jokingly, was a headset, and I was like, yeah, sure, you know, whatever, you can have mine. Little did he know that six months or less later, he would be actually running our starting line, so uh, Ian's going to feel important, he's going to have his own little crew shirt with his name on it, he's going to have a headset, so... Uh, Ian, thank you for for stepping up and, and, and trusting us enough to join this crazy family we call Point One. Again, cannot do it without every single person that, that is supporting us. Yes, sir. Well, listen, y'all, uh, thank you guys so much for, for doing this on this show. Um, you, you know that it means a, a lot to me to be able to uh, get information out there, uh, to be able to reveal things, builds, race series, whatever it is. Uh, I, I love having, uh, having that opportunity. So thank you guys for, for choosing this show for that. I appreciate it. Thanks for having hey. us. Yep. Catch you on the flip side. All right, guys. Peace thank out. You. Nick, yes, we'll sir. see yes, you we'll. on the hill. <laughs> see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks guys. All right, everybody. Well, how about that, y'all? That was a great episode. I just wanted to show everybody this real quick. I said, uh, I told Daniel Cornell I was going to play this real quick. This is... uh, This was a um, a Hilo jump that my, my last Hilo cast, my last Hilo jump uh, in the in the army. Not much to look at, but uh, pretty important to me. Stand by. I don't know that there's much to really hear. I don't think there's even any volume. jump uh, between 1,200 and 1,500 feet, and this is uh, So, not much, not much to see, but uh, Daniel Cornell is uh, 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 airborne, qualified, and we get to talk about it uh, quite often, and I ran across that video, and I, I just thought I'd share it. Nothing crazy. Uh, Alex Kennedy, Alex Kennedy, thank you for joining, sir, all the way up there in Canada. Uh, I appreciate it, man. Take care, everyone. Hopefully, we can see you at the next races. I hope they open up the, the border for y'all, sir. Um, Dan Carter Racing, that's a good group of guys right there, no doubt. No doubt about it. Bebo loved it. Thanks, Nick. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Bebo says thanks for uh, thanks as always, Nick, for all you do, buddy. My pleasure, sir. Uh, Carrie Day, yeah, n- no doubt that the whole team, gentlemen and ladies, uh, y'all are definitely making a big impact. Uh, it's exciting, exciting. Thomas says I'm ready. Buggy isn't, but I am. Well. The good news is you don't have to have a buggy to get to the races. Just come and hang out with us. I love it. Jerry Foley, that's badass. Yes, sir. Jared Davidson, that's awesome, bro. Thank you for your service. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. Bebo says that's awesome, Nick. Nick, thank you for your service. Jim Pulley, that's awesome. Thank you for your service. Pete says great show. Thank you for joining, sir. Shelby does like to talk. Yeah, makes makes it easier on me. David Shelley Fritz, uh, 
Hey, we need to get Fritz trans performance transmission on here, y'all. I know that uh, y'all have a lot to offer this show. I would love to have y'all on. Uh, Thomas, we got nothing but time. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Carrie Day, awesome show as always. Nick, my pleasure, Miss Carrie. Jed Harper, awesome show. Yep, uh, Chris and Christina, I saw you guys making comments. Uh, uh, congratulations on uh, coming up on your rookie year. I'm excited for y'all. Uh, be watching for you, and uh, if you ever want to come on the show, man, tell us about your experience. I'd love to have you on. Absolutely. Bebo says you couldn't do it without my bouncer wife, Mitzi. Uh, Bebo, you know that I always, I always preach about the wives and the family at home and how important they are. There's no doubt we wouldn't be able to do this with uh, without the support of of our support chain, our family. You know, no doubt. Um, listen, uh, tomorrow night I am going to have uh, RC class NRRA RC class driver of the year, Mr. Mark Crow, on the show. Um, Mark was second, I believe, for the season in the RC class, um, and uh, he he is just a phenomenal driver. Uh, he rolls with the Browder brothers, uh, so he's a driver, you know, in all aspects of no matter what he gets behind the wheel of. So uh, that'll be a good episode. Be good to have uh, good to have Mark on the show. Uh, Steve, I reckon we can get weird if that's really what you want. Steve, I, let's get weird, brother. Let's get weird. Uh, David, Shelly Fritz, Shelly's been practicing. Good, good deal. Awesome. Uh, Heath Day says, Carrie may be a ghost, but she plays a huge part uh, in me being at any of these races. Yeah, oh, absolutely, Heath. Absolutely. Levi, good show, man. Thanks for your service. My pleasure, Levi. Well, listen, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Um, again, thank you to Point One for joining us tonight. Thank you for all y'all who watch. And we average about 100 people uh, at a time here. So that is amazing. Um, so thankful to, to be a part of this, uh, be a part of this sport, be a part of this, sh this show, um, all of these race series. Man, I love all y'all. Uh, I hope to see everybody tomorrow night. Please do all of us a favor, everybody that's involved in rock bouncing, it's free, y'all. Just like, share, subscribe to these channels, uh, all of this. Uh, you know, that's all you have to do. Get it out there. I always say get it out there in, in your off-road groups, your razor groups, you know, uh, your side-by-side -side groups, whatever. Don't break any rules now as long as it's okay to, uh, to share this stuff please do but uh, you never know you, you could share this show or uh, any of the information about any of the racing and and you might you know we might catch another fan we might get a fan out of it or or another driver or something so please uh, do us all a favor and and share this y'all it's it's free to do so um, uh, and with that I'm gonna get out of here y'all thank you so much um, Jared Davidson yes but microphones good to go Good to go. <laughs> All right, y'all. See everybody soon. on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound impossible to obtain in a monoro recording.